Oh, look, that person's up by four points. So if that person finishes third, then they can win. It's like, come on, we're smarter than that. Everyone needs to be smarter than that. The broadcasters are smarter than that. They can relay over the information. Yo, it is semifinals time. With semifinals time, I don't know who's going to be watching this sort of stuff, but I hope that you do because what I'm about to tell you is very important. There is an individual out there who I've already covered before, an individual who doesn't get very much press, but should be getting much more press. His name is Tyler Watkins. He wrote the piece on workout number three, making the best of a bad situation, and I covered it with the text-to-speech deal. And the reason I covered that is because I felt that Tyler put out a very good message through his verbiage in his write-up that made it very positive and said, hey, this is what could have been done and this is what did not happen. What did CrossFit do? What didn't they do? And what could they have done? That was the entire deal there. Tyler is a stat head. For some time now, he has been pushing this thing called a Z-score. And the reason that I don't think it's caught much traction is because the Z-score can be kind of confusing. So I took a stats class in college. I took a stats class. I very much like numbers. I like simple math. I was always kind of upset when I found out that everybody was now teaching Common Core until I figured out that I use Common Core in my head whenever anybody asks me a question. So like, hey, Andrew, what's 12 times 10? And I'm like, well, what's 10 times 10 plus 10? two times 10. It's like, oh, 20. It's like, all right. I know that's a very dumb example, but I always try to break down things in my head so that they're much more simple. And then when people ask me questions that they may not understand, I try to make it seem more simple. When I would coach the classes and I was given the breakdowns of the workouts before the class, I would try to bring it down to a third grade level. And sure, that might be annoying for somebody who is at an eighth grade level, a high school level, or a college level, but everybody can appreciate. And sometimes you might even pick up on something. Remember that show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And nobody was smarter than a fifth grader. Everybody can learn something when you bring something down as far as you can. And I think that I'm pretty good at bringing something down to the understandable level for most people. So I'm going to try to do that for you with Z-score. The thing that I remember from college in relation to Z-score was that chart. It's kind of shaped in an upside down U and in the middle, you'll see that there's the 34s and it's like 68% of people will fit right in the middle for the most part. And then there are the extremes. I've always thought about this in terms of height. Like most people are going to be a certain height and then towards the one end, there's going to be people who are taller and then towards the one end, there are people that are short Order. There's going to be way more people in the middle on average than there are people on the end. So you don't know many people who are seven feet tall, just like you don't know many people who are like four feet tall. And that's the best way to think about a Z-score curve. Tyler has used this method to implement it into the CrossFit games, into the CrossFit semifinals. To this day, right now, if you go to Tyler Watkins' Instagram, you'll be able to pull up the Z-score for the semifinals. Why is this all so important? I've been bringing up this podcast that I listened to with Brute Strength, where it was Micah Shoemaker, and he was talking about, is CrossFit a fitness test or is it a sport? And what we've become very accustomed to is the 100, 96, 92, 88. 82 scoring format. And in that scoring format, if you finish first, you get 100 points. If you finish second, you get 96 points. If you finish third, you get 92 points, so on and so forth. Everybody's become very accustomed to it. You know this because on the final day, if Matt Frazier has a 200 plus point lead and there's only two events, you know that Matt Frazier is a lock to win the CrossFit Games. It's very good for the outsider who doesn't know freaking anything to look at that and say, oh, Matt Frazier's going to win the CrossFit Games. Oh, he could basically just do the minimum work requirement. Now, if it's a sport and people have to understand, just like turn on the TV and try to understand, that makes more sense. If it's the test of fitness, which we always think it is, and everyone says, do you know, fitness down earth, then that is probably a terrible way to do it. And Tyler breaks it down in an article I think he did with the morning chalk up in relation to Rogue. I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description. And I'm going to go ahead and let you read that if you want to read it, but I'm going to break it down in something much more current day. If you watch the Rogue Invitational, you'll know that they did the Bella Complex. They did the Bella Complex where they were circling around and you'll remember that the top of the males field, you had Jeff Adler, you had Guillermo Harris. Jeff Adler is very strong. I believe he hit like 367, something like that on the Bella Complex. He did that on his third lift, right? And when you were going around, you could see that Guillermo Harris was just staying ahead of him. He was so far ahead of him after his second lift that Guillermo Harris did not have to take his third lift. If they don't change anything, that they're going to have some trouble with the second. And honestly, I think that's a great call. And I was going to say it after the second lift, but... There's no need to chance another lift because 
He's thrown up the most weight. Dima Hero is passing on his third and final attempt. Why? Because in the current scoring format, Guy had already locked up 100 points. He had 100 points. Jeff Adler got his 96 points for first and for second. There was no incentive for Guy to try to do anything more unless he was just trying to showboat. And that's very stupid, especially because it's a heavy lift. He might hurt himself. You know how that goes. In a Z scoring format, Guy would have been incentivized to go again. Because in the Z scoring format, it is taken into account the discrepancy of the margin that you had beaten the second place by. So if Guy hit a 370-pound Bella Complex and Jeff Adler hit a 367-pound Bella Complex, that's a three-pound difference. Present-day scoring, Guy only picks up four points no matter what. Now, if Guy decided to slap on 400 pounds, which we very well think that he might have been able to do on that workout, he would have then beaten Jeff Adler by 33 pounds. In a Z-scoring format, he's going to be rewarded for those points. What it does is it gives Guy the 100 points that he deserved on that event, and then Jeff Adler is going to slowly move his way down. So instead of getting 96 points because there's a bigger gap right there, Jeff Adler is going to finish with something like 88, 89 points, something like that. And this is something that Tyler brings up a little bit better. In the rogue thing that I just talked about with the morning chalk up, he shows this on the female side with Haley Adams and a couple of the competitors. But what the big breakaway is that there is an incentive to do better on these events. So you are rewarded for the things that you are more fit in. So if you are a stronger individual, you have a reason to then showcase your strength. He beats him by 33 pounds. He gets more points for beating him by more. Now, here's something else that's very important. There's somebody who finished third in this instance, right? So let's say that there was an individual who finished third. Let's call it Justin Medeiros at 360 pounds. In the typical format, he gets 92 points, right? Because it goes 100, 96, 92 on the scoreboard. In the new format, he gets 100 points. Jeff Adler gets 88 points, like we said. And then Medeiros would get something like 85 points. It's something relative to the next closest person. How much did he beat him by relative to the person in first? And there is a formula for all of this. And when you're taking into account who you're trying to have spit out the other end as the fittest on earth, this is all very important. Think about the swimming events at the games. Everyone in Australia, they're great swimmers, yeah? They should be rewarded for being better at the things that they're better at. The same thing happens on the other end. If you're very bad at something, and let's say you can't do something like a pegboard climb. At the 2016 CrossFit Games, you can't do a pegboard climb. You should be hurt on the scoreboard for that sort of thing. So if you don't finish an event, you should be catapulted towards the bottom for being unable to do something in the ultimate test of fitness. And then if somebody can do something that nobody else can do, they should also be rewarded on the top end. So not only are you being rewarded for doing more or for finishing faster than everybody else, but there's also the inverse effect on the opposite end of the leaderboard. You finish below everybody else who could possibly do something. So we've already talked about how this is important when you're trying to take into account who is the absolute fittest, not just who is the coolest looking in terms of sport. Does this make a difference? I actually talked to Tyler about this and the biggest time that it made a difference was the year 2017. Everybody remembers that year. I put up a video recently, the one that was combating the closest finishes at the CrossFit Games where Tia Toomey and Cara Saunders were lunging down overhead, kettlebells overhead, Tia put them down and then she had to pick them back up and she still ended up winning the games that year. However, the finishes that Cara had won that year, they were so dominantly finished that she would have had beaten Tia that year. That's probably the biggest flip up in this entire Z scoring thing. And for the most part, they end up working rather similar where you don't see too much difference. But I know that I just looked at the semifinal leaderboard. That is the Torian Pro. The first couple of events are done and Ricky Garrard is sitting in third place. Because he had such a dominant finish on the rope climb workout and his relative finishes on workout number two were tighter than that finish, he would be in first place if you gave him a Z score. But on the leaderboard right now, he's sitting in third per the scoring that we usually use. What does this do? What does this mean? It means that if we are truly testing for the fittest people on earth, you should be looking into something a little bit deeper. Reward them for being fitter, hurt them for being less fit. A couple of times on the Savan show, I brought up the fact that I think Hunter McIntyre is arguably one of the fittest people on earth. Sure, he struggles a little bit with strength, but he struggles with strength because he is so enduring. He's very good at running. He can do like the four minute mile or and a half minute mile, something like that. He can do that while he weighs 200 pounds and still, and sure, he is still rather strong. He was able to get through first cut of the CrossFit Games in the year 2019, and he was able to move his way through the 185-pound statue, so he beat the first cut. He's strong enough. However, if you put him up into a five-mile race against the entire field of CrossFitters, let's say everybody can fin everyone on the CrossFit side can do a six-minute mile for five miles. He f everyone finishes in about 30 minutes, but he can hang on.
on to a five and a half minute mile pace, that would put him at 2730 on that entire workout right there. And everyone else would be 30 minutes, 30 minutes and a half, 30 minutes, 45 seconds, but he beat everyone by two and a half minutes. All of a sudden you're taking into account the prowess that he has on that endurance event. And it kind of would help him on an event where he might not be quite as strong. He would still be getting hurt on an event for not being that strong. But the thing is in a CrossFit gym present day, there are so many people who are so good at so many things that are involved the Olympic lifting and the power lifting. And it's almost by the nature of what we do that somebody like Hunter McIntyre, who isn't very great at snatching, like let's say he can power snatch 225. If you walk into an affiliate, there's a good chance that you run into somebody who can power snatch 225. If you walk into an affiliate, there's not a good chance that you run into anybody who, who can come close to a four minute time on the mile. That's the big thing right there. Because the barbell is so cool, everybody trains the barbell. Lots of people are strong. Go to the CrossFit games, a 225 power snatch for the men is just like, well, whatever. But for Hunter McIntyre, it's a big deal. And it will really circumvent that argument that is, are you this, the, are you the fittest person on earth or are you the fittest person who does CrossFit? Toes to bar, chest to bar pull-ups in the butterfly fashion, wall balls, everything that we do that is kind of exclusive to CrossFit. And that stretches over to the way that we use the barbell, train the barbell, and a lot of the affiliates in the world train the barbell. That is not common to many people who do fitness things. It would bring a lot of validity to the sport to take into account the differences in something such as the mile run in relation to the heavy weightlifting events. And this entire video, I think, is rather positive. The entire video says that, hey, if we are truly testing the fittest on earth, then we should not be using the scoring system that we are using. If we truly want to be the community of people that doesn't say, oh, look how good the whoop is, 150 beats per minute, and you just want to say you don't know what the hell is going on, and you want to say, oh, look, that person's up by four points, so if that person finishes third, then they can win. It's like, come on, we're smarter than that. Everyone needs to be smarter than that. The broadcasters are smarter than that. They can relay over the information. They can say something like, oh, this individual needs to beat this person by so much time in relation to the Z-scoring format. I think that it's something that we can get across. There's a way to do it. Tyler Watkins can help, and I think that this is just something that's very cool. We should look at it over the course of the semifinals. I'm going to link everything that I mentioned in here in the freaking footnotes here. So go down there. I think that he has something for the semifinals in his Instagram profile. So go follow Tyler Watkins on Instagram. Click on the little link, and then you can look at the Z-scores, see what a true fitness test will look like over the course of the weekend. He'll be doing it for every single weekend. I think this would be stupid wild. What do you think? Andrew Hiller out. Thank you.